Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to the Wednesday Word of Wisdom. Yours truly here, Prophetess Antoinette Jackson, here to share yet another inspirational uh, midweek vitamin, if you will, that I pray will help to get you through the rest of the day and the rest of this week. And prayerfully, even beyond, depending upon when you should have time to listen. I have a message that the Lord has uh, has given me. And I would actually prepared this message for another audience um, that I actually um, delivered to on Monday night. But I felt... Um, I felt an urge to also share uh, this message on uh, the platform which the Lord has given me here. And so um, it is so heavy. It's a lot. Um, It may be um, a couple of parts to it, but I do believe that this is something that for those of you that are faithful in your listening, and obviously we're not... um, a part of the audience on Monday, then it is certainly something that the Lord wants me to continue to release. Um, And this is around uh, spiritual awakening and um, being alert, being aware, being astute um, in the spirit. And if we think about just um, the simplicity of, you know, simply closing our eyes and going to sleep, um, there are realms even of, of sleep and, uh, you know, we can go into the deep sleep and all these scientific terms and everything in terms of for the realms of, of sleep. But if we compare that and if we research that and we look at where we are spiritually, it is important that we understand our status. And are we um, awake Do we have the capability of being awakened or are we just going to remain in the state of deep sleep or even slumber? Um, So I want to share, I'm going to go ahead and and get into um, this teaching on this information that the Lord has just downloaded in my spirit that I feel is certainly relevant. Um, As I tell you all week after week after week that, you know, before I can ever even release a word to you all, I have to sit and I have to receive. So I've already been preached to by way of the Spirit, and it is important um, that I release what the Lord has given me. On Sunday, I treated myself to a negativity detox day. Yep. I, you know, I turned off the ringer on my phone. Um, I didn't, you know, normally when I'm moving around in the kitchen or cooking or, you know, doing this or that or just even relaxing, um, I have my music going, whatever music of choice I feel like that day. Some days it's gospel, some days it's R&B, some days it's jazz, some days even a little hip hop, all right? Um, But whatever it is I'm feeling, but that day I didn't want any television, I just didn't, I even tried to watch television and I couldn't. So I felt that, you know, the Lord was just really calling me to a place of just silence and just solitude and recentering and refocusing. I didn't talk to anyone on the phone that day. Um, My husband called um, while he was at work, but I was like, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just being quiet. I'm being still right now. And I, I just don't want to be bothered. And so it was important for me uh, to do that. And I, I realized um, I did listen to on my on my phone. Um, I listened to Bishop T D Jakes, and he preached a message on that morning, and it was entitled "He Still Wants You." And I just became overwhelmed with joy. My eyes filled with tears to hear the message because he used as a uh, backdrop. He used Peter you know, as a disciple. And and if we know, we all know Peter and we know that Peter denied Jesus three times. And, um, if you know the story, you study the story of Peter, you know, and even though he, 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 he even denied that he denied, you know, so Peter just, you know, lied, but 
regardless of what he done, God still wanted to use him. And Jesus still wanted him on his team. And so I just want to encourage you with that because that was just really, uh, it served as a great backdrop um, even to this message. Um, there were some components of the message that God gave me um, in that particular time. And so um, I want to share, but no matter how bad things may seem, no matter how the things you feel you have done, um, are doing, will do, that God still wants you. And I need for you to hear that. I need for you to hear that this evening. God still wants you. In fact, um, he created us all, right? He created us in his image. And when he created us, he said, mm, that's good. No, he said, that's very good. And so I think we need to understand the essence of who God has created us to be. And I want to set this up for us, for us to understand that no matter what comes our way, no matter what situations we're in, we may find ourselves, no matter how bad, you know, we think something is or something we may have done to ourselves or to someone else, that God still wants us and he has forgiven us. You need to hear me. You need to hear me. He has forgiven you. He has forgiven me. We have to receive that. We need to receive that love. We need to receive that forgiveness. We need to receive that grace. So come out of that sleep or that slumber that you're in, um, that we've been in. Because in order for God to do what he needs to do in us, through us, and for us, we have to be alert. We have to be aware. All right. So um, as I moved in silence throughout uh, the day on Sunday, the Holy Spirit reminded me of the scripture in Ephesians chapter 4, um, verses 14 through 16. And I'm going to read it in the King James Version first, and then I'll read it. Um, in the message translation. But it says, Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. I'm sorry, this is actually the New International Version. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So in the message translation, it says, No Prolonged emphases among us, please. Infancies, baby, you know, pettiness. We'll not tolerate, we'll not tolerate babes in the woods, small children who are easy prey for predators. God wants us to grow up, to know the whole truth and tell it in love, like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ, who is the source of everything we do. He keeps us in step with each other. His very breath and blood flow through us, nourishing us so that we will grow up healthy in God, robust in love. So how does this relate to being awake? And I want to talk specifically about spiritual a spiritual awakening. So how does this scripture relate to that? Well, I'm glad you asked the question. See, once we come into the knowledge of who God purposed us to be from the beginning, then we are spiritually awake. When God created us, he breathed into us Ruach, this breath, this is breath, wind, or spirit. Ruach means breath, wind, or spirit 
in Hebrew. But when we are talking about God and Ruach in the same sentence, it is referring to the Holy Spirit. So when God breathed into us, he breathed into us his spirit, the Holy Spirit. And so through his spirit, he gave us life. So how, what, when, why did all of these, we allow these things to come um, and accept these things that would cause us to die or to decay? Perhaps it's past traumas. Maybe it's even present traumas. Maybe it was a failed marriage. Maybe it was an unsuccessful uh, raising of a, of a child um, or not necessarily unsuccessful, but you did the very best that you could and they chose to go a different way. How, what, when, why would we allow these things to cause us decay? Was it, you know, every wind and doctrine that the scripture talks about in Ephesians tonight? You know, did we, did we, were we following one teaching and one month we were following one preacher and pastor and the next month it was someone else or you know we were looking at the 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 television we were going to church by way of the tv which all of us have had to do uh this last uh year but when we eat from so many different tables it causes confusion it causes strife and ultimately it can result in decay and so this is what the scripture is talking about tonight because when you are spiritually awake, you are able to discern between what is good and what is evil. What's good for you versus what is good to you. Um, so could this decay have been caused by something that someone or some or something that someone else wanted you to become versus who God had called and purposed you to be. Some of us, unfortunately, have and or will put all of our faith in our friends, in our family, in our pastors, in our first ladies, in the president of the United States, in the government, but even in our children and our spouses, yet we will not trust our creator God who is, who was, and is to come. We will not put our faith and our trust in him, but rather things that we know are going to fail us. This, my friends, is indicative of decay. When we are functioning from places as such, that is indicative of something is dead in us. Something has caused us to lose sight on what is important. So in order for us to, when we are spiritually awake, we have vision. We have vision. And, and what I want to help you understand in um, potentially this two-part teaching is that there is a difference between sight and vision. We see we have vision by way of the Spirit because vision gives us the capability of beyond. It gives us depth. It gives us width. It gives us height. It gives us length. Depth, uh, vision, that is what vision does for us. But when we talk about even just in our sight, sometimes we can only see what's right in front of us. We're not looking to, willing to look on the other side of the door to see what may be awaiting us there because we're just so focused. And I know it's been said that we have tunnel, that relates to tunnel vision, but when you have tunnel vision, th this, this doesn't equate to the in the spirit. 
because tunnel vision, you only it's like you only see what's in front of you, or you only see one directional. But when you have vision, well, it could, yes, you only see one direction. That's right. But vision, true vision, spiritual vision, when you are awake, allows you to have, see more dimensions. And I need you to follow me with this because it is so important. Because by the end of this teaching, I want you to understand, first of all, where you are. And then I, I need for you to understand where you need to seek God. Because if you just have sight, then there, there, there is probably some areas, there are probably some areas of growth that need to be addressed in your life. And you're going to have to seek God so that you can get to the place of not only just having sight, but having sight and vision. And let me just parenthetically pause right here and say, that in this season wherein we are and have been and are going, there is going to be a necessity for both sight and vision. You can't just be able to see what's in front of you, but I need for you to be able to pray and to seek God so that you may see beyond what is actually in front of you. Hosea 4 and 1 says that we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Destroyed means destroyed. It means decayed. It means dead. It means deceived. And any other D you can think about, it probably means that too. But yet and still, in knowing this, we won't take the necessary steps or we won't take out the necessary time to read, to hear, to study, to listen. And it's not always on, you know, a television show. Sometimes we've got to we've got to pull out a scholarly article or we've got to go and search the internet and we've got to seek God even in in in, in searching because everything that comes back to us does not mean that it's truth. And so that's Again, the difference between sight, because if you read something, you're going to say, well, I saw that in the newspaper, or I saw that on the internet, or I saw that on Facebook, or I saw that on Twitter, and you took it for what it was. But vision will allow you to see beyond that. It often allows you to see some things that are not actually written or not actually explicit because you have vision to see in the spirit. This is why it is important in this time because things are happening around us. Um, but because again, we've, we've elected not to educate ourselves on, on things that are happening, then the enemy is going to sneak up on us. So we've erected these little gods, little gods with a little G. Uh, things that rob us of our time, rob us of our peace, our joy. I mentioned some already, you know, social media can 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 literally drain us. And that's why I opted to come off social media. I've been on Facebook over three years with no desire to go back. I haven't missed a beat in my life. Um, in fact, my life has been enhanced and enriched because of that. Because the, another way that the enemy robs us of time Several months back, even though I had gone to Instagram, Facebook bought Instagram, I was on there for a while and I got off of there. I'm on LinkedIn, you know, from a pro professional network and to stay connected um, for my job, but I see even some elements of that evolving into uh, trashy media like uh, a lot of the other platforms are and have become. But again, you have to know and be able to seek God. And I shared with uh, the audience that I shared with on Monday, uh, there is a uh, Netflix documentary out there. It's called uh, The Social Dilemma. And it, it, all, it talks about these various platforms of media and how we think that we, we own the things that we put out there. And all some of us, you know, don't have any restraints when it comes to, you know, putting our life, you know, out there for the world to see. 
It's called the WWW for a reason. The WWW star stands for World Wide Web. And so that means that your stuff, whatever that is, is being exposed to the entire world. So I need us to ponder that because if we have vision, and I know somebody saying, well, I, you know, I use that to promote my business and I, I use it to do this and I do use it to do that. But what were we doing and what and how are we doing these things before there was social media? Yes, I know YouTube is a form of quote unquote social media. Um, but I don't use this platform for foolishness. And I will not, not allow anyone else to come on this platform and use it for foolishness. Um, so I know that, that my time is up here today and I think that this is a great place to stop because I try not to go uh, too long in these segments, uh, which is why I uh, preface this message tonight by saying that this would be certainly in multiple parts. But I think I've given you enough to think about um, over the next week until we're able to be here again. But I want you to think about your state. Are you slumbering? Are you sleeping? Are you awake? Do you have sight? Or do you have vision? Or do you have both? So I want you to ponder that. Ponder that for me. And I will be back again, should the Lord will, this time, same this same place, rather, next week. So you be blessed. Enjoy the rest of your week. And thank you so much for listening. God bless you.